Hello all my fishy friends and welcome back to another Stay Fishy Adventure. Today's an adventure, well I should say the next few days is an adventure that is completely driven off of this right here, our bellies. We're actually headed up to the very, very northern tip of Washington uh, where we're going halibut fishing on an addicted video. So you guys will have to stay on, on the lookout for that one. That's going to be coming out soon. But on the way there, we're doing a little stay fishy action and we're following our bellies and our noses the whole way. I'm really excited for this adventure. It's supposed to be beautiful weather. We're going to be camping along the whole way. It's going to be great. Thank you all so much for being here. Let's go do it. It's a new fashion. Boots and shorts, and shorts and boots, and boots and shorts. But the boots and shorts is for our first dinner item of the day. Oh yeah, that's good. New boot goofing. Gonna need that. And gonna need that. Now you guys are probably wondering, what in the world is he doing with that bucket and rake? And the answer is, I'm going clamming. One of my very favorite clams in the world, steamer clams, uh, is high and dry at the moment. It is a super, super low tide right now. Uh, it's a minus tide here in the Pacific Northwest. And actually there's clam tides all throughout this week. Uh, and what a clam tide is, is when you get a section of the tide throughout the 12 hour swing, uh, where the tide is low enough for you to be able to go out and harvest the clams, whether it be razor clams or, or steamer clams like we're looking for today. But nevertheless, it's low enough. As you can see, it's like a barren wasteland out here. It's freaking pretty cool, honestly. Not something you get to see every day when you have this, this super low tide like this that exposes so much ground. But this area is very plentiful with steamer clams, and we're gonna go find us some. Hi ho, out to dig some clams we go. Do, 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 do. Hi ho, hi ho. Now there's private digging beds um, that I'm gonna stay off of. Just behind me here, I'm having to walk my way over to this point. And that'll get us onto the legal ground where we can dig. And then I'm gonna try to look for an area that's not quite so muddy. I wanna dig around more rocks and different stuff that those little clams will be living in. Mainly because I don't wanna have to clean up such a muddy mess. I've seen lots of signs of clams see these old dead shells everywhere that's what I want to find those are the little guys I'm after start raking see if we can't find any clam way over here through the mucky muck but I could see from a distance what I was looking for and it was this it's light green color not quite as muddy let's see that's beneath already see there's a keeper bam 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 three of them right there already that's what we're looking for Whew, yes let's get to digging In the mud. Crazy to think that a, such a tasty creature lives in such nasty sh Sometimes the tastiest things are in the most unhospitable places. Okay, we're halfway there. Okay, so 80 clams is the limit. So let's make our way back to the truck. It's only two o'clock in the afternoon, so we got a long ways to go and a lot of fun stuff to do, so let's do it. Whew, okay, made it back to the truck. We got a clean clam. That's a bucket of clean clam, if you will. But I have a little surprise. Sent Brooke off into the woods to go find some mushrooms. And look what she found. Mushrooms. These are oyster mushrooms. Oh, They're man. right around the corner. Look at how beautiful these are. Incredible. I don't even know. They smell like butter. I think that's the closest thing you can really compare it to. It smells like if you open a little cube of butter, give it a big old whiff. Mmm, mushroomy butter. Let's go find some more. Oh, yeah, yeah. Bunch down there on that log, too. Yeah, those ones aren't as good, but these ones are great. Here they are. Little ones. In order to, to find these mushrooms, you need dead alder trees. And this is exactly what this is. This is an old alder tree. It's dead. It's got a little bit of sunlight here. 
but just look at how pretty that is. Such a cool little bouquet. And we got them scattered all the way down the tree here. Super killer find. The oysters will go fine with our steamers. All right, let's pick them. Look at that. Just an incredible mushroom. Well, it's only been a few minutes of this episode and it is an extreme success. I must say, it's one of my favorite things to go out and do. One of my favorite things to film with you guys and, and show you is how fun these little road trips with nothing in mind, no destination really, but to forage, to scavenge, and to, to get things that taste good. Um, and it's fun because it kind of can lead your way on certain adventures and then you meet a lot of neat people along the way, see a lot of beautiful things, and you just live a good life through and through the whole time. So, so far, this little adventure has gotten us oyster mushrooms, some steamer clams, and a whole lot more is still to come. So let's find our way back to the truck and head on our way north. Okay, we have made it to camp, everybody. It was a long drive, but we have made it. Look at this view. That is what I'm talking about. Ocean front, beautiful, beautiful evening. Dogs are happy and I am happy. It's been an incredible day so far. We're gonna tie it all up with an incredible meal. Day number one of the beach has been a total success. We got a big day planned for tomorrow. We're gonna be doing some fishing. We're gonna be doing some more foraging. And of course, we're gonna be doing some more fun outdoor activities. I'm not gonna give it all away, but first things first, we need to appreciate this view. Look at how great it is out there. Okay, chateau is built. The skies are blue. Look at this sunset. Unreal. It has been long awaited and a long day waiting to eat these things. And I can't wait. So what I've done is I've actually, off camera, I went and got a bucket of uh, salt water. There's the bucket. There's the water. Uh, but I got some salt water to put these things in so they start to purge. And we'll see how this, I'm not going to do a really big batch for tonight's menu. Uh, but we'll see how they how they taste. A lot of times if you don't let these things purge, you don't let them sit in the salt water for a good amount of time, like usually eight hours or so, so that the little necks come out of the clam. They start spitting all the sand and all the dirt out that they've been eating um, and kind of fast them. Honestly, you starve them and then they feed us. It's kind of ironic, isn't it? Uh, but we're only going to eat so many tonight because I know they're going to be a little bit of crunch inside of them. There'll be some sand and some grit inside there, um, but it's not a big deal. It's a little bit of fiber, if you will. Uh, but I have a really fun recipe. So we got, obviously, the oyster mushrooms. We got the clams. I got a little bit of a special sauce I'm going to be making. And we got a side salad to go along with this amazing sunset. I can't get over it. Day number one. Total success. Open this up. Oh, look, they're starting to poke out. See them in there? See them little guys in there poking out? Brown trout poking out. Sorry, buddy. Now you're having a nice time. I'm gonna get a good, nice little layer of bottom of thing in here. I'm gonna go too crazy because these are all gonna open up and we need space to do so. Put these right here and give them just a second. So when I came back from digging these things, obviously it was a muddy mess out there. So I, I washed them off really, really well in some fresh water, got all the muck and grime off the outside of them. If you really want to go crazy, you can take a little brush to each one, but I got them pretty darn clean. There's no mud or anything on them. So that's looking pretty good. Now they wait. Now for our additives. We have our beautiful and amazing oyster mushrooms that are going to go in that sauce. We have a little bit of chives, a shallot, Roma tomato, and Jordan's forgotten item of the week, butter. And butter is a huge component to this recipe. You need like a half a stick, like need. That's that's a priority. But I'm gonna substitute it with some whipping cream. I brought this for our bagels that we have in the cooler, but it'll work. Um, it's still a dairy base and nice heavy cream. It'll add that little bit of butteriness. Butteriness? I think that's how you say it. Um, and I'll add a little bit of that, that whipped flavor too, that, that little bit of a cream flavor, so it'll be good. So let's get this underway.
now for our mushies here, I don't want to go too incredibly small because I don't want to really waste a lot of this good flavor. I want to be able to get little big, little bitty pieces. Um, that's kind of why I've cut everything up into the sizes that I have because I want to be able to get little bitty pieces with each bite that I take of these clams. So with the clam, I want a little bit of an onion, a little bit of that, that chive, a little tomato, and a little chunk of mushroom in there. Should be good. Okay, let's get her going. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna take a little cupcake, Save Blanc, first things first. Try it out. Yep, that's fine. And then we're gonna get the clams drunk. I don't want to go super, super crazy, but just, you know, we want enough for our sauce, so I'm going to go just up, probably halfway up the clam. If you look here, as the clam's sitting there, it goes about halfway up. It's just enough room for those things to open up, because there will be some water kind of come out of these clams once they start to open up. Now, so before these things even start to open up, I'm going to add all my other ingredients here. I think that's really important, because we're going to need time for those mushrooms to cook, especially. Um, we don't want those the rest of those ingredients to start to mix in, kind of flavors will start meshing with the rest of the of the dish here. Kind of get that stirred in a little bit. But anyways, we want that flavor to start meshing in with those clams as they start to open up. You can see they're starting already. And we want to get that nice steam going. So they'll all open up together and all those flavors will start to blend. I'm gonna do it here first. A little bit of tar season. A small bit of the parmgar. Dollop of Daisy. Put that right in the center there. I'll mix that around a little bit more. Make sure that gets all up and down in there. Oh gosh, oh gosh. This might be a new trick, everyone. Instead of butter, we'll go with the, the whipped Philadelphia. Oh, the smells, the smells that are happening right now, everybody. The smells. I wish you were here. Oh, the wine with those mushrooms. Oh, that's so good. Oh, it's insane. Absolutely insane right now. A little more as a top. There you go. One last little ingredient though, before it's all said and done. We're gonna go a nice little heaping of Parmesan, because why not? All right, everybody. The moment we've all been waiting for. That's what I'm talking about. Looks like losing the butter didn't hurt us in the long run. Oh, look at that one. It's all full of cheese and stuff. Mmm, it's good little mater, a little mushy, little mater mushy. That's all I got to say. Look at that. Hot, tasty. Mmm, man. I think it's created for that one. I love living off the land like this. This this meal took us a long ways today. We're four or five hours away from home. Saw the beautiful, beautiful sunset. And now, Brooke and I are gonna enjoy an amazing dinner. Sitting right next to the fire, listening to the sounds of the ocean. This is some good living. One thing before we leave you though, I've been working on a Kalamazoo sourdough sponsorship. So all of you out there in the, the Southwest Washington area that know what Kalamazoo sourdough is, hit them up, tell them what's up, say Jordan's using your stuff. He really wants, really wants your love, because it is the best sourdough bread in the world, I have to say. But this is the way you really test it. We got today. We got the sun-dried tomato and cheddar. A little bit of cheddar, a little bit of sauce. Mmm. A lot of bit of flavor. I better scoop up some of the goods. Mmm. Holy schnikes. Mmm. Wow. Oh, good morning. Good morning, it definitely is. Another bright and sunny day out here. Time to get a cup of Joe going, and we got a little surprise for you. Okay, this week's the fishy munch of the week. Where are they at? Where's one? Aha! The Munch of the Week, home style Rice Krispies. If you don't know, now you know. 
These things are absolutely delicious. Got the little chunks of nugget there. A little nutmeg, if you will. Soft and squishy as you'd expect. Perfect little addition to coffee. Mmm. Good cup of joe. Time for a swim. That's right, everybody. We're doing the polar plunge. We're gonna go hop in the ocean, get away for the day, take ourselves a little dip. Come on, let's do it. <laughs> she almost wiped out. Woohoo! Yeah! Whee! Okay, all I know is this looks cold. Oh, it ain't too bad. Ooh, that was pretty cold. That's pretty cold. That's pretty cold. <laughs> Oh, it ain't that bad. If the surfers are doing it. They got one too tall. Yeah, I'm just gonna go for it. Woo! Woo! Oh, revitalizing. <laughs> oh, boy. That is not warm. Okay, I'm done. I got my fill. Ooh, feet are cramping. Feet are cramping. Ow. 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 We have arrived. Back to the river, everybody. I don't know how many comments there's been. I haven't really seen any, uh, but I know a lot of you out there are probably like, hell, why are you not fishing? all this stupid turkey hunting and this mushroom picking and this clam digging, what about the fishing? Well, we're back at it. And today, we have this incredibly beautiful river here. Um, I got a report from a friend that called before we headed up here, and I was asking where's a good place to catch some cutthroat trout. So I wanna twitch some sculpin jigs for some cutthroat trout. I've done it a lot on the Addicted channel, uh, maybe a couple times here on Stay Fishy, but it's one of my favorite ways to fish. And this is one fishy situation, if I may say so myself. So I'm gonna get my rods rigged up, I'm gonna be throwing a little rooster tail. I'm gonna be throwing a twitching jig for these things. And hopefully we'll find some of these beautiful cutthroat. I don't think we'll keep any today. You're allowed to keep them up to 14 inches, uh, 14 inches and above, but I don't agree with the rules in Washington where you can actually kill these big, beautiful trophy cutthroat trout. So I'm not gonna be killing them, but we're gonna be catching and releasing them. We have more beach plans, uh, but the low tide's not till two o'clock. It's 11 right now, so we got a couple hours to fish. Let's get a line in there and see what happens. Time to get set up. And this is what we're gonna be using today. One of my home tied <sighs> Sculpin jigs. <sighs> now Sculpin are a, a small little like bottom dweller basically that live in the rivers. And in these rivers in particular, we have these runs of sea run cutthroat trout. They're almost like a steelhead like you guys have seen me catch before on different episodes. They're almost like a steelhead in a way um, where they actually migrate to the ocean and live in the ocean part of the year. And then they migrate back into the rivers to one, feed on spawning uh, salmon and steelhead eggs, but then also to spawn themselves. And they're never really destined to go to one river in particular. They kind of follow the runs, follow the fish and go wherever the most fish are, uh, which is, kind of makes them a cool little creature. And man, they fight like heck. But one of the things they do is they're cannibalistic little dudes and they eat little baby trout uh, baby salmon and steelhead, and these sculpins in particular. So it makes for a really fun bite, especially on a light rod. Hopefully it's gonna work for it. On my other rod, we're just gonna set up a good old fashioned rooster tail. Rooster tail, and then one split shot at the top end to make sure that thing gets down there. Okay, let's go fishing. Oh boy, glad I put the waders on. This is some frigid cold water. Okay, here we go. Here it goes. Sculpin. So I'm just making this thing swim, honestly. Just giving it a little bit of action as it goes through there. Gonna let it sink down nice and deep. And a lot of these, these these uh, cutthroat will be hiding in these little areas in these deep pockets like this, kind of seeking refuge and making their life as easy as possible. I really wish I could get to that other side of the river and be able to 
cast into that back eddy there. I know there's gonna be some in there, but I also have this little eddy in front of me here, so this will be good. Okay, new spot, new opportunities. Get over there. I'm working through there pretty quick because it's shallow. Don't want to lose my valuable sculpt jig. I really want to get it way over there. Nailed it. That's the spot. Oh, got him. Got him. First one. First fish of the day. I'm not sure if it's a cutty. Kind of looks like a smolt. No, nope, looks like a smolt to me. But we got him. Take a look here. Okay. Oh, 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 he's gone. He's gone. That's okay. First fish of the day. Not bad. It was a little steelhead smolt. Not what we're looking for. Don't want to be catching too many of those because we want those guys to live and grow strong and come back as big steelhead. So I was kind of guessing that's what would happen using the spinner, but I'm going to switch back to the sculpin now. See if we can't find us a real cutthroat. Oh, there he was, son of a, oh. Maybe he'll hit it again. Man, that was a good whack. That was what we were looking for there. That thing nailed it. Dang it. That is what we were looking for. Dang it. Got another one. Another smolt it looks like. It's kind of the issue here I'm seeing with the uh, with the spinners. Too many smolts are biting it. And once again, I don't want to hurt these smolts. I don't want these things to be. We want these things to grow big and, and go, come back later at a later date and, and be able to grow strong and, and again return to the ocean and then come back into the river. So I might move one more cast. So let's just see. Okay, I think it's time we move on. You can definitely tell there's too many smolts here. I think we're going to need to go further upriver or just kind of change locations. Like I said, if you're out trout fishing and you're on a river that has salmon and steelhead and you're catching a bunch of tiny little fish that look like rainbow trout or that have really big eyes and are super silver, um, you're catching salmon and steelhead smolt. So it's best to leave those things alone. We want those to grow big. They're not really that much fun to catch anyways. Um, so move, do whatever you have to to get away from them. Don't sit there and pester and, and sit there and, and accidentally kill fish that we want to come back later in life. So I'm gonna leave these guys alone, head to a new spot. Not sure what time it is, we'll have to look, but we need to hit the low tide because I have some plans for the low tide this afternoon. We need to do some more foraging. We need to find some more food for this evening's meal. So let's get in the truck, do a little cruising, see what we can find. Psych, we're not fishing anymore. It is one o'clock p.m. Pacific Standard Time and the tide is going out and we need to go get some things. So, put the shoes in four wheel, Chaco. Once again, you see me out here. You see me out here doing Chaco things all the time. Let's see here. This is Chaco stuff for sure. Oh, we can get across this log, eh? Nice, found us a little way across. Ooh, and our first culprit. This is what we're here for. Seaweed and hopefully some mussels. Um, got a good tip from my buddy Lester, and he told me that this was a great place to come and find us, find us some seaweed. And uh, the other thing, mussels. Sorry everybody, focused really hard here, trying to cross the log. But anywho, we're making our way out to the ocean's edge. Got this little lagoon we have to get around. There was a bridge at one point. But we're gonna try to get as far out in this area as we can. Uh, and then onto these, this point that you guys can't quite see yet. And then there, hopefully we'll find us some mussels and some seaweed to eat uh, with this next recipe. So, wish us luck, let's get there. Whew. Okay, we've made the jaunt on over to the tide pools and we finally got to the rocks. And what we're really looking for here is a couple different types of seaweed. I'd like to find some mussels while we're here, but mussels aren't gonna be the hardest thing in the world to find. Uh, but what we really want 
is one of these many different styles of seaweed that we're going to find down here. Um, if we find some other stuff that's legal to keep, we'll be getting that too. But until then, it's time to go hunting. Okay, so we have this one. Okay, what's that called? I don't know. Okay. We got Turkish towel. Okay, that's Turkish towel. A Minaria Sacagawea. Okay, Sacagawea. Sugar, sugar kelp. We got this one. And then this is sea lettuce, so green laver. That's what we really want? Yeah, and this is the one we really want to make the salad. The seaweed salad is what's on the menu. Let's see if we can go find some stuff. I'm pretty sure there's gonna be some of the species here, but of course we want it fresh, we want it nice. That's what we got here at low tide so we can get out towards the kelp beds a little bit more and uh, see what kind of seaweed we can find. There's one on the beach that I still have in mind to go to. Um, we'll give this one our best effort, see what we can find. And hopefully, again, find some mussels along the way. If not, we've still got steamers. We'll do the same kind of recipe with the steamers. They'll all be tasty no matter what. The slime. This is normal. Oh, so, oh. Is that's that sea lettuce? Pretty. No, this is not sea lettuce. This is the other one. <laughs> I forgot the name, but the, the sea lettuce? lettuce is really bright green. Okay, first one found. The, we don't know what kind. We'll have to pull out the thing as we go here and uh, see if we can find exactly what we're looking for. Aha! Aha! Bring the person who's not colorblind. That's how you find stuff. Yes, yes, yes. Now this is sea kelp. And this is the kind of stuff that you can find in the store. All dried up and you can use it as a supplement. We're not going to use it for this purpose, but sea kelp is awesome. Awesome. Sea kelp. Okay. Now we're getting into the area where it's nice cold water. Like this is going to mainly be where we want to harvest this stuff. We don't want to be dapped in that, you know, that water that's been out and in the sun the whole time. Ooh, the water's getting really cold. We're starting to see a lot of fresh, good stuff here. Ooh. So pretty. Hermie! Hermie! Hermies! <laughs> Little Hermie! Cute. Oh, so cute. Cute. So cute. Little hermit crabs. It's a pretty cool little tide pool here. Okay, Brooke found something. Interesting. That's it? Sea lechuga? Well, we'll find out. Well, we'll find out, she says. Yes, we sure will. Okay, here we go. All I can think of doing, I probably don't want to try to pull the roots out of this stuff. So I'm just gonna grab handfuls of it. Kinda looks like what we're looking for, I think. Right? Yep. How peaceful. Nice little lapping of the waves coming up onto the bank. Freaking. Beautiful seaweed and seagrass just kind of dancing back and forth. Pretty neat experience. I'm glad we came to do this. And this is going to make one of my favorite things I always get when I go out to eat sushi is seaweed salad. And uh, especially where we were at, we had so much options for getting this kind of stuff. We thought, hell, why not make our own? So here we are making our own. Very fulfilling. My life is, my life is complete. Well, I figure in the name of science. Pretty tender and good. Hmm. Can't say I ate it, but I can definitely say I ate it. <laughs> Whoa, big starfish. Check it out, everybody. Neat, oh. Wow, how cool. So cool, here's the underwater view of it. Neat. What do you think of all this stuff out here, Little? He's so fascinated. He's so fascinated, dog. Starfish are so cool. I'm not gonna disturb this little guy. I'm gonna touch him though. I'm that guy who's going to poke it with a stick. Wow. What a neat little creature. Okay, what is this? Interesting rock. It's like a dead coral or something. It's got little clams all up in it. Kind of neat. That's all habitat for crustaceans. We're going to put that right back there. Okay, we're pretty much good on our seaweed salad ingredients. Um, now we need to go find some, some mussels. That's second on the list here. And I think, I'm looking over here, there's some big, big boulders. A lot of times you need dikes or jetties or, or some sort of natural structure sticking out into the ocean where the tide rolls onto and then recedes uh, to find these kind of mussels that we're looking for. 
And these are one of my very favorite things to eat. So let's see if we can find them. This is a, a dino real dino peed. Look at this with there on the inside. We just, I just found this. Oh, I guess you can't. You rolled up already? I think so, but I think it's dead, Crazy but you can see that. Each. They're a really interesting color on the inside, like an orange. They got little legs. Weird. We're getting closer. I'm pretty sure, see these big rocks, things have definitely changed a bit from where we were. A little bit different rock structure. Um, not as much of that flat clayish bottom. Um, big rocks where we're gonna be able to find these mussels. So I used my binoculars from the road and I'm pretty sure I could see them out here. We're gonna have to get out here and check them out. It might've just been barnacles. Barnacles. Oh, there's a mussel. There's one. There's one of what we're looking for. I'm actually just gonna get him. Heck, why not? Here it is. That's what we're looking for. In the bucket. Another Hermie. Lots of Hermies. Look at this little guy. What's oh, a snail? Sea snail. There's an oyster. Okay, muscle number two. Just a little dude. Okay. Well, this might take a while. Okay, these are all pretty small. Not gonna lie. The little muscle inside there is gonna be tiny, so I think we should leave those. And try to find a rock with some bigger ones. What do you know? Brooke found the big muscles. <laughs> okay, this is what we're looking for. This will feed us right here. I brought my crappy knife. Time to pick some muscles. Okay, I'm gonna go with these guys because they're over here in this little pocket. They're all about the right size. I'm just kind of giving them a little twisty here. Still titty twist. Oh, there's a baby crab in here. It almost looks like a spider. So cool. Miniature crab. Okay, got our meals worth. Once again, no need to over harvest on any of this stuff. You saw how we didn't take that much seaweed. Really didn't take that many steamers. Didn't take that many mussels. It's just best to only take what you need out here because especially mussels and, and clams and mushrooms and everything else, it only lasts so long. So we're pretty much just harvesting enough for about a meal and a half, a nice full tummy. And then we're going along our merry ways uh, and not taking too much from other nature because she's providing. So there's no need to take more than you need. And in any sense, whether it's fish, shellfish, seaweed, mushrooms, whatever it is, just use what you need and pass it on and give back as much as you can. Because old mother nature provided, we should provide back too. All right, get some cold water on these, back in the truck on to the next adventure. Okay, we have arrived at a beautiful, beautiful spot. I actually have a recipe to do here really quick uh, for a different video. I'm gonna tease you with a little bit of like hints of what it is, but it's for a video that's come out before this one. So go back and check it out. It's a, a video where I found $500 laying on the forest floor. That's the title in the thumbnail. So we're gonna get that cooking going. We're gonna let our, our uh, mussels sit in here and, and purge just a little bit longer. And we're gonna have an amazing meal right out here on the beach. This is awesome. Okay, cook is over. We didn't need to go back and watch that, everybody. That was a delicious meal. And now we're on the hunt for camping. Enjoy. Oh, head to the ceiling. <laughs> this is going to be worth it. I can see it already. Made it. Woo. Let's take a look at camp. That was stressful. Hope you guys were all as stressed out as I was on that. Thought we were going to get stuck, but worth it. Look at this spot. And look at this spot. Oh my God. It's an old bunker. What? Get out of here. No way. Trippy. Wow. An old World War II bunker. That is wicked cool. Trippy. <laughs> 
so cool. It's an old World War II bunker. Look at this view, everyone. Holy crap. Oh, wow. Eagle just took off. No big deal. Would you look at this? Wow. <laughs> I'd say that was a score. Oh, that is cool. Look at this place. Eagles flying. Oh, wow. We found paradise. I can't believe it. How cool. Let's get camp set up. Let's get dinner going. All right. Well, Brooke's setting up the tent. I moved over here to a little bit more lit area so that you guys can see the recipe that we're gonna do. And it's one we might have done once before here on Stay Fishy, but it's called Tom Ka Clam. And if you guys have ever heard of Tom Ka Soup, it's a Thai soup uh, with a coconut milk base. It's one of my very favorite soups in the absolute world. So I got my clams opened up here. You can see they got a nice steam going to them. I've let that water evaporate off. I have these beautiful, beautiful mussels starting to show themselves. Now what I'm gonna do, I got all my ingredients prepped and ready for you guys here. Let me go order chicken butter. And here's the list of the Tom Ka clam. I got my tomatoes. I got some chopped up ginger. I have some uh, hot red peppers. I have some garlic. The best part of this all is the mushrooms themselves. And then I have some sweet coconut milk. You don't want to go with the unsweetened kind because it really won't have that same flavor. Uh, and then I'm actually going to stick to the base of the normal Tom Ka flavor with some chicken broth that I'm going to put in there too. And of course, I don't have lemongrass, so I'm just gonna use some freshly sliced lemon. So, as this gets going, now that these have opened, I'm gonna give them just a little bit of that chicken broth. You can go as much in there as you want. Because honestly, the bit of the soup uh, and of this, what's gonna be left in the pan after you eat those mussels and after you lick those shells clean and throw them away, that base is gonna be incredible because you can slurp up all the rest of it, all the mushrooms, all the veggies that we have here. It makes a really, really good dish. So, we're gonna let this chicken broth get hot and start adding our ingredients. I'm gonna go the ginger first. Some red peppers, put that garlic in there. Well, all those flavors that need to take some time to really render with the recipe in there. And we're gonna add our mushrooms and our tomatoes last because we don't want those to overcook. So let this start to render. Get ready to feast. Okay, now that's gone for a few minutes. I'm gonna grab my lemon here. Let me get a real good squeeze of that lemon juice. Because that lemon grass or that lemon juice flavor is super important for this recipe gives it that really like strong pungent um, and delicious flavor that that lemon brings to this sort of dish uh, with all these flavors and then that milk that coconut milk kind of neutralizes out that acid gives it an awesome awesome flavor so a couple more minutes we'll be giving it our last ingredients there's in our coconut milk you don't want to go super super heavy on that stuff now the coconut milk has gone in I'm gonna go with my tomatoes. Of course, the mushrooms. Give it a good mix. Oh, oh, that's smelling good. Yum. Look at how beautiful that is. Now we wait. All right, we have to give them a try. I can't wait any longer. I'm much too eager to burn my mouth. Ooh, it has a beautiful Tom Ka look to it. Let's see if it's got the Tom Ka flavor. Shell drop, unbelievable. Oh, that might be one of my best dishes yet, you guys. I gotta say, anybody who doesn't eat shellfish that doesn't have a shellfish allergy, you're crazy. Look at this, let's give you the smorgie board here. We got the clam, the tomato, the ginger, garlic, a little bit of mushy. <gasps> Ooh, I lost my very valuable broth. Better get another scoop. Mmm. My oh my, that's good. Holy crap. Well, it turned out perfect. It's getting dark. Ready to go share some with Brooke. Get a good night's sleep. Because tomorrow we have the real day. Tomorrow is the big fishing day. We've been planning this whole trip. I'm not gonna tell you guys what it is. It's a big surprise, but we're doing something we've never done here on Stay Fishy, and I'm very, very excited. See you guys in the morning.
Mm. Good cup of joe. Well, I've always said two eagles in a tree is good luck, but a hundred of them on a dike, that's really good luck. <laughs> Beautiful day. This is just gonna top off this trip. The weather out here on the coast has been unseasonably warm. It's only the end of May. The coats are coming off. Okay, here we go. Game time. Found it. Down the bottom. This shouldn't take too long. Doesn't usually. Now what we're going for today is link cod and black rock bass. There's a couple different kinds of bottom fish, a couple of rock fish that we are allowed to keep out here, but the best, the best of all, are the black rock bass. Okay, first drop was a bust. The thing about these things is they're usually in like a giant biomass. So there'll be like a, just a huge school of these fish when you get to the bottom. And a lot of times you won't even get all the way to the bottom. They'll be suspended up off the bottom because there's such a big pot of fish. So this isn't our spot. Time to move on a little bit, see if we can find some more fish. That was a good feeling. Giants are coming. Oh, there he was. Oh, 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 he's here. I think we found him, everybody. I think we found him. Got him. Yep. Ooh, that might be a ling. That might be a ling. Got hung up on the bottom for just a second. Oh, oh, he's taking line. Got hung up on the bottom for just a second there, popped it loose, and while it was sitting there on the bottom, hooked the fish. First one on. What is this? What could it be? Might be a starfish. <laughs> the world's most head shaking is starfish. Oh, nope. So this is a species that we cannot keep. We're gonna have to let this bad boy go. All right. Wow, what a cool looking fish. Come on, open up, open up. Oh, oh, well, we'll show you the next one. That was a copper rockfish, so these ones we can't keep. There's a lot of different species and a lot of different colors of rockfish. That was one we can't take home today, so he's gone. I'm sure we'll get another one back to the bottom. Black doodle. Oh! There he is, got him. That feels more like what we're looking for, too. Did it come off? I don't think so. Something's still there. Whatever it is, it's not big. Nope, it's nothing. Oh, yeah. Not good, too. Oh, oh, take a line. Oh, that was a good take. Just kind of fluttering it down there, tapping the bottom, tapping the bottom. Whammy! Ooh, that's a heavy fish again. I think it might be another copper. So those coppers, they stick their little wings out, their little fins, and they really create a lot of pressure against your line. This one's either probably a double rockfish, or I'm guessing it's another copper. Oh, baby ling, baby ling. Yes, that's what we want right there. Baby ling cod and a sea cucumber. Talk about variety. Wow, look how pretty that little guy is. Neat. First keepable fish of the day, and a sea cucumber. Wow, interesting. Ooh, 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 what did I get? Oh, Jesus. On the drop. I thought I hit bottom, wasn't bottom. It was a fish. Oh, it might be a big ling. That might be a big ling. 
What is this? Oh, oh double, double, double Rockies. Oh, baby. We found them. Is that a ling on the bottom? No, double Rocky. Woohoo! Now that's what we're looking for right there. We call this one taco. This one's chalupa. Wow. So what's happening here, that's not food coming out of this gullet. That's a swim bladder. So they get biometric pressure change as they come up, pushes out that air in their stomach. But luckily, we're keeping these things and eating them. Wow. There we go. Oh, we found them, everyone. Captain Dave put us on them. Oh, another beautiful black. Come on aboard, brother. Jimmy Chonga. There he is. What a beauty. Oh, these are one of my favorite fish in the world, everybody. And boy, they're gonna make a good taco. Didn't even get to the bottom. Gotta get to the bottom of this situation. Oh, guys, that's a good one. Oh, that's really good. That's heavy. Ooh. I don't know, I haven't gotten any head shake. Oh, that, oh, that was a little bit halibity. Wasn't it? Ooh, the suspense is killing me. We're getting close though. We're about to see leader. Oh, oh big cabbie. Oh, big cabbie, yep. Wow. What a wicked looking fish. Look at that. Just a mean guy. Big old wings on him. No wonder it was such a hard fight. Look at how gnarly his head is. Like a dinosaur. So, remember the bullhead family guys, same thing we were fishing. Basically the sculpin pattern that we were using for the cutthroat. This is his big uncle. Wow. Crazy looking fish. See you later, buddy. Going home. Okay, so we've moved in a little bit closer to the shore onto some rock shelves. This is where we're gonna find these big sea monsters. We're looking for ling cod now, everybody. And these things, if you've never seen them before, look absolutely gnarly. They got huge teeth, but great flavor. It's one of the best eating fish in the ocean. So, so for these, we're fishing squigglies. Big jigs, we drop them down to the bottom, wiggle them around, see if we can't find ourselves a monster. Got a hitcher. Got something big on here, everyone. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, oh, it's an octopus. It's oh. an octopus. It's an octopus. Oh my God, we have an octopus, everyone. Don't want to touch the boat. Ned's fine. Oh. Yes. That's the best. Oh. One <laughs> yes. That's way better than what we were after. Oh heck yes. Octopus on deck. Wow. Wow. Look at this thing. Creepy, creepy. <laughs> well, can't say that's ever happened on Stay Fishy, but I'm glad it did. That is gonna be tasty. Did he kill me? Bite him between the eyes? <laughs> <laughs> Do wow. It. What an interesting creature, you guys. The Kraken. <laughs> oh, so cool. Well, we did a bit of research, and the only way to kill these things is to bite it between the eyes. Here goes nothing. Let's turn color. It was like instant. Worked though. Oh, there he is. Got him. Yep, this is what we're looking for. Got our octopus. Now it's time for our sea monster. Come on, that Mr. Ling Ling. We'll call this one hot sticker. Oh yeah, Whoa. nice one. Real nice one. Yeah, baby. Woo! That is exactly what we were hoping for. What a neat creature these things are. Look at those teeth. Look at that mouth. Just engulf that jig. Such pretty spots down them. All right. Might be another cuke. Oh no, that's not a cuke. That's not a cuke. That's an enchilada. Enchilada. Well, there he is. Ling number two. That's the limit. Back to the dock we go. How neat. The furthest northwestern point in the lower 48 states. We're on the edge of the continent right now, everybody. 
so cool. We got the black rock, we got some of these canaries, and we got the link cod. Each meat's gonna be a little bit different. A lot of the rockfish are gonna be the same, but link cod will be a lot different and taste a lot different as well. So let's get this stuff all cut up, processed, let's hit the road. Clean our first octopus. Should be interesting. Okay, so what we read on Google says we want to make a small incision in the skin, and then pretty much the whole thing should peel off of here. This is very, very weird. Oh yeah, yeah, it's doing it. So here's what I'm gonna do. We're just gonna go each leg at a time. So I'm gonna cut the leg off, to make this a little bit easier. Yep. Well, if it wasn't obvious enough, we're not in the ocean anymore. And we've come to see one of the biggest marvels of Mother Nature around this area. That's the biggest cedar tree in the world right there, everybody. Let's go take a look at it. So everybody, this is a red cedar tree, which is native to the Pacific Northwest. And without a doubt, this is the biggest one I've ever seen in my life. It's 16 foot through at the base. I mean, from one end to the next, straight through the center of it. 16 feet through. So run out of tape measure if you're at home and just take a look at what that really looks like. That is incredible. So much character to it too. Let's go take a closer look. detour on the way back here had an awesome day of fishing thank you so much dave and chris for taking us out there today really kind of made the trip and that was some phenomenal fishing but now we're here looking at one of the marvels of mother nature the largest red cedar in the world they call it the duncan tree uh, and this is a red cedar tree and there's a few different species of cedar but the reds are typically the biggest it's crazy it still stands alone when it's been logged all around, this same tree has just stood here for forever. We have a couple more spots we're going to stop today. And then we have a little bit of cooking to do before we end this episode. But, wow. I must say, that's an impressive piece of wood. But this is probably my favorite tree yet. Let's check it out. This one's got a hole in it. Wow, look at this. Better crawl in and check it out. Looks like it'd be a good place to cook a meal or hibernate. Look at this. Got a little hole up in here, a little window action. It's so dry and comfortable in here. And the smell, the smell is unbelievable. It's like a freaking little box almost. I'm in the tree's box. Just bit an octopus in the eyes. Might as well check out the inside of a cool tree. to our final destination. Finally clouding up, it's been an amazing weekend. Probably the nicest camping at the coast I've ever had. An incredible adventure through and through. We've seen so much, done so much, eaten so much good food, and spent so much quality time with good people. It's time to eat our final meal. Let's get to cooking. right everybody we're eating fish tacos tonight this is my favorite way to eat this rock bass and especially the ling cod whatever's sitting on top of the cooler here i got it all cooled down on ice for the long road trip that we've made this afternoon and now the sun's setting it's time to eat us a good meal after a long day of fishing and a long day of driving what a perfect day let's get started here wow those are some beautiful pieces of ling cod and one thing even if you buy this stuff in the store usually they try to get most of the bones out but you have to cut down this lateral line so i'm going to look for these fish excuse me look for the bones there they are, right about there. So I'm gonna run my knife right down the bones and just cut those things out. You waste a tiny little chunk of that meat, but it's worth it to not be eating bones out here. And then I'm gonna keep these in nice little taco sized strips. So cut it like there, cut it right there. And this makes it a lot easier to make a good taco if you do keep it in the right proportion size. Just like that. And 
have a couple extra freebie pieces. Oh yeah, that's what I'm talking about right there. Yum, yum, yum. In my tum, tum, tum. One taco, two taco, three taco. Okay, so because I'm just doing tacos here, I'm gonna use just a simple taco seasoning. First off, I'm gonna go with just a small douse. Just to, uh, the meat's already wet because it's been sitting on the ice all day. But I'm gonna do a small little dousing of tapatio or your favorite hot sauce, whatever it is. I just stopped at the store and this is all I could find. Then I'm gonna go just a simple plain taco seasoning and that's what I'm gonna season my fish with. And I'm not gonna go any breading here because this, this will add a really nice flavor to it. it. Doesn't have to add any crisp. You're gonna want that crisp coming from the, the slaw that we're about to make to put on top of the tacos. This is one of my very favorite ways to make these fish tacos. Doesn't need a breading, doesn't need too much on it. Just some seasoning and a little bit of tapatio. We're gonna mix that all together here. And it's good to season your fish, like I said before, in many other videos, it's good to season your fish a few minutes before you fry it. I want all that stuff, all that tasty goodness to be soaking into that, soaking into the flesh of that fish. Let it sit for just a minute, soaking the rest of that flavor, and then in the pan we go. All right, for the second part of my meal, it's probably my favorite part of this, is making my slaw. So I'm gonna take just a head of cabbage, it's nice to have a little mixture of cabbage, but this purple cabbage will work just fine. I'm gonna cut that butt off. And I'm gonna try to slice this into smaller pieces. Probably go halves, like so. One down the middle here. And then just nice thin strips. That way we can rough it up, get a nice amount of slaw. And then we're gonna add the rest of our ingredients to it. Now this is my favorite way to do the like basically the dressing for a taco, like especially a fish taco. Instead of going through and grabbing little fingerfuls of every single different condiment that's gonna go on top of that, I wanna have it all blended together. So I'm doing the slaw. Slaw of any choice, you can use shredded lettuce, whatever your preference is. We're gonna do the cilantro in there, some green onions, and then the queso fresca. And I'm gonna to top it off with some sour cream and a little bit of the tapatio. And then that way it's just fish in the tortilla, slaw on top with all the good ingredients, and going right in your mouth like we want it. healthy amount of sour cream in there. You don't want to go too much or else it'll get a little too creamy. I'm gonna go some more of the taco seasoning. Good dabble. Have some tapatio in there. And then we mix her up. So just a skosh more sour cream. Now for the final touch. I'm gonna do some queso fresca. And if you guys have never cooked with this stuff or eaten it, it's a, it's a Hispanic style of cheese. Kind of in between a mozzarella and a cheddar. It's very crumbly and nice. Goes super nice over this. It's got a very fresh flavor. So I'm gonna go pretty heavily on that because I love this stuff. One more little mix up. Heck yeah. Okay, and goes our oigle. I'm gonna do just a nice, kind of a hefty amount of it. You don't want that stuff to go dry. Okay, here's the flip. Ooh, it's nice and flaky on the one side. Again, you can kind of see why I don't need that breading or any sort of panko or anything that I would normally put on a fish taco. It gets that nice little crispy edge just naturally and that seasoning, that taco seasoning can soak in really easily. Give us a nice little crispy layer. Almost there. Okay, my next little secret. As soon as they come out of the pan while they're cooling off, because there's no way you should eat these yet. Still have to get our tortillas ready. I'm gonna cover them with a nice little layer of Parmesan cheese. Take the chef sample here. Oh, such a nice texture. I believe this was the lingcod I pulled out. Rock bass and the lingcod have to be one of my favorite in the world. You can see why. Mmm, so good. Okay, a tiny bit of that fishy oil in a pan. Now it's time for our tortillas. Okay, got a nice little poof to the tortilla. Chunk of meat in there. 
bit of the hot stuff. Nice scoop of the slaw. And there it is. Beautiful lingcod taco on the beach. Mmm. Tortilla's perfect, fish is perfect. The crunchiness of the slaw, perfect. Mmm. Wow. Really no words to describe how good that is. And I must say, the reality of it is it just feels good to be able to harvest your own food. This entire trip has been based off of finding good food, living a good life, and spending time in the outdoors. And I think this is the perfect example of what it's all about. One thing I'm sure we're all thinking about is the octopus. I'm gonna make you guys wait till next week's video to see that. I'm gonna cook it probably right at the beginning of the video. I have a really good idea for a recipe to do. I'm really excited to share it with you guys. So until next week, same time, same place, you all stay fishy. I'll see you out there.